couple of years ago, a friend of mine, a priest friend of mine who's quite smart, uh, he was watching a TV program. Uh, I, I don't think it's on anymore. It was called The West Wing. It was quite popular uh, about whatever that was, eight, eight nine years ago. And uh, it's, it was a, a TV show about politics and about this, this couple in, in, in the US trying to uh, <clears throat> work their way through the political ranks, gaining more prestige, more, uh, more power, more influence. And um, one of the things that they used to do, this couple, in order to attain uh, more power, more prestige, in order to climb the social ladder, was they had what was called an open marriage. And open marriage means that we're married, but we can still be unfaithful, and that's OK. You're OK with me being unfaithful. I'm OK with you being unfaithful. It's all great. So they had this open marriage thing. So that was how uh, they would then seduce whoever they needed to in order to, to, uh, to go up to, to climb the social ladder. But in one episode, the, the lady of the couple uh, discovers she's pregnant. Now, being pregnant, this would obviously completely ruin her career because uh, she, can't, she can't afford to be pregnant, she can't afford to be taking time off, she can't afford uh, the, 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 the change that that will bring into her life. And so... <clears throat> she decides to, to have an abortion. And my priest friend who was watching this, he said it was just very interesting, like just the way it was just kind of presented, it was presented so kind of so simply, you know? Uh, I have a career choice to make here. And if I'm pregnant, I won't be able to pursue that career. So I need, I need an abortion. And this priest friend of mine, he said it just struck him. This, this, this expression just came to his mind. Child sacrifice. Child sacrifice. Sacrifice the child in order to have your career. It's, 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 it's quite simple, you know? And it's, just, it's interesting how when we look back uh, on peoples from yesteryear and we hear about, uh, you know, maybe you watch Indiana Jones over, over the Christmas period and you see these... Uh, Human sacrifice, we go, that's, that's, that's horrific, it's barbaric. You know, I think maybe the Aztecs or whoever. Um, and we just think how, 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 how cruel, how unnecessary, how ridiculous it is, actually. You know, to, the, in order to improve our harvest, in order to appease the, the sun god, the moon god, whichever god it is, you know, spill blood, and then somehow this divinity will be appeased and it will rain or we'll have sun or whatever we need in order for our crops to grow, in order for this disease to, to disappear. Spill blood. Spill innocent blood. Sacrifice someone. It's just very, very interesting how our modern world has made abortion politically correct and acceptable. And it's, it's, it's it, I mean, there are desperately sad and and awful circumstances <clears throat> in which people may be conceived through rape or, or other circumstances, obviously. And this is never to, to turn a blind eye to that or pretend that everything is okay. Of, of, of course, <clears throat> that kind of violence is absolutely deplorable. But does abortion make it better? Does abortion fix the problem? Is it the child's fault? Does the child deserve to live? Does every life matter or not? And as a, as a, 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 what we would call now a, a, a modern people, surely, surely, like with, with, with the, the understanding of biology that we have now <clears throat> and the, exa the, the, the tests that we're able to do, what we know about the, the formation of a child now, and that just at such a young age, like a couple of weeks, you know, we've got a, already got a heartbeat, fingernails, everything's already there. It just... It's just going to get bigger, but it's all there. It's all there. It's got its own DNA. No one knew what DNA was 100 years ago, right? <clears throat> we know it's, 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 it's its own person. And it, it's choosing life. It's choosing to live, right? It's never saying, I'm out of here. It's, it's the little life is choosing to, to, to live. And what's interesting, I didn't have time to look into it as much as I wanted to this morning, uh, but what's very, very interesting is... So a quick bit of biblical history. Um, okay, Abraham follows Isaac. Isaac follows Jacob. Jacob gets a new name. Israel is, is Israel has 12 sons, okay? One of them is Joseph. Joseph gets sent off to Egypt by his brothers who don't like him. Okay, big famine. 
back home in Canaan. So his brothers come down to Egypt and end up spending a lot of time in Egypt for a couple of generations. They're freed then through Moses and they have to go back home and reconquest the land <coughs> of their ancestors. Now, back in Canaan, one of the main things that they had to actually uh, undo was this, uh, the adoption of all sorts of foreign gods, idolatry, okay? And one of the practices for the Canaanites, uh, which was, a, a scripture seems to attest to it, a fairly standard practice was child sacrifice, right? The Canaanites sacrificed children. And, and this was something that some, when on their return, some of the Hebrews actually fell into, right? They fell into this, this, we, we see it in, in the book of Judges, for example. You know, Jephthah, he's a, he wins a, a battle and he says, Lord, if you grant me this victory, I will sacrifice the first person I meet when I go home. And he is victorious. And he goes home and who runs out to meet him saying, Daddy, 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 I'm so glad you're home. His little daughter. And then he says, you have struck me a severe blow. For now I must sacrifice you. Like the, Lord, sorry, the Lord never asked him to do this. This was never a command from God, okay? And so then she, she goes and she uh, uh, m mourns her virginity because she was still young, and then he sacrifices her. God never asked for this, but this was standard practice back in the time. Uh, Ahaz also sacrifices one of his sons, a king of Israel, he's like king of Judah, and he sacrifices one of his sons. This isn't Hebrew practice. This was never <clears throat> asked. <clears throat> God never asked them to do this. It also shows how far the people had drifted from God, that in certain circumstances they could justify the sacrifice of a human being. It sounds barbaric, but how far are we from this? You know, in our modern world, how far are we from this? Not very far at all. Not very far at all. In fact, if anything, I think because it's, it's, it's hidden, because it's also... Uh, in, in some way discreet. Uh, I think abortion can be justified with a smile, that it's, it's an expression of freedom. It's an expression of, 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 of uh, liberty. <clears throat> but when this happens, when the people of Israel, <clears throat> when the chosen people, when the Hebrews start to fall into this kind of child sacrifice, it is then that God says, enough. You know, that's just, it's very interesting, like, there were all sorts of malpractices and all sorts of problems with, with the way uh, that the, the kings behaved as well. You know, they, they instituted slavery, Solomon uh, fell into idolatry himself. Um, but when they fall into child sacrifice, that's when God says, enough, enough. And he's very, very clear. <clears throat> uh, the prophet Jeremiah, for example, uh, the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel says this, I am about to send a disaster on this place that will make the ears of those who hear it tingle, for they have forsaken me and defiled this place by offering incense in it to foreign gods that neither they nor their ancestors nor the kings of Judah have ever known. They have filled this place with innocent blood. They have built high places to Baal, where they burn their children in fire as burnt offering to Baal, something I did not command or mention or even think of. This is Jeremiah 19, you kind of look at it afterwards. <clears throat> Therefore the days will come, declares the Lord, when this place will no longer be called Topeth or the Valley of Ben-Hinnom, but the Valley of Slaughter. In this place I will thwart the plans of Judah and Jerusalem and let them be slain by the sword of their enemies by the hands of those who seek their lives. I will give their corpses as food to the birds of the sky and the beasts of the earth. That's, uh, that's the Lord not holding any punches there. Once we slip into that, that kind of child sacrifice, this, the, the, it's simply, it's it, God actually himself says it's unthinkable. Something I didn't command you to do, I, I, I couldn't even think of it. And yet it's now legal in Ireland and across most of the, the world. So we pray, we really do. We pray for every lady who finds herself in challenging, difficult, 
sometimes horrific circumstances and where this seems or is presented as the solution. And it seems, it seems easy, it just seems easy. You just go, you take the pill, you get the thing done and, and then life, life moves on as normal. It looks easy, it sounds easy, it's presented as something very, very easy. But it's not. I was over in the States a couple of years ago and um, we went to a, uh, a kind of a protest <clears throat> for pro-life. There was an abortion clinic and beside it, they, a group of Christians, so mo most were, were Protestant, some, some were Catholic, but most were, most were Protestant. <clears throat> very, very good people. Uh, they built a clinic called um, something like uh, the, the Choice Clinic or something like that. So it was, it was a name that sounded pro-choice, but they're actually pro-life. So when people would come, because they're, they're right beside each other, so they'd say, oh, Choice, whatever it was. It was as I said, something like cho Choice, you know, Women for Choice or something like that, I don't know. <clears throat> something along those lines. So people would go in and they'd meet these wonderfully motherly, charming uh, people inside. And uh, I got talking to, to, to one of them and I asked her, what's it like? And she said, it's, just, it's tough. It's tough, like. Because um, girls come in and the situations are awful. You know what I mean? And I said, what, what is it that, that, that drives them to it? What, is it? what is it that makes them think that this is the, the only solution? And she said, nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten, the girls who come in here will tell me the father wants nothing to do with it. I have no choice. I'm on my own, I'm 16, or I'm 18, or I'm in college, and the father wants nothing to do with it. So I don't have a choice. This is very interesting like that. What's considered pro-choice, what's considered this, this wonderful uh, rediscovery of, of, of uh, feminine liberty and all of that. Uh, they do so, though, fundamentally, because they don't feel they have a choice. It's, it's just, it's, it's all so wrong. It's all such a great lie. And so then these uh, women who work in that clinic, they offer free ultrasounds just so, do you want to see your child? And sometimes when, when, when they accept, and sometimes when they've seen the ultrasound and they see the little heartbeat and the little movements of Junior in the womb, they change their minds. And then little lives are saved and then those little lives go on to grow up and get married and have children of their own and have a whole line of descendants that would simply never have been were it not for, for the work of these pro-lifers. Incredible stuff. But I think it's, it's, it's kind of, it's consoling on one hand and somewhat scary on the other to think that the Lord will intervene the Lord is going to intervene in history. He has done so in the past. Once we start sacrificing children, that's, that's where the Lord draws the line. That says, that's where he's going to say, enough, enough. And when he does call down this disaster, Jerusalem is destroyed. The temple that Solomon built was destroyed. They were invaded. So the Lord will intervene. And it's, this may seem a little harsh. It may seem... Some might even argue it's an overreaction. Only in heaven will we see the value of each little life. Only in heaven will we see how simply horrific abortion is in the eyes of God. In the eyes of God. In the eyes of our judge. In the eyes of our father. Only in heaven will we see it. And only then will we understand how when the Lord allows some sort of a persecution due to our infidelity, it's actually an act of mercy. Because it, it's better that we have some cross to carry here. And because of that, be purified and be made somehow more worthy of heaven than to live a life in the lap of luxury here and never get to heaven. So we ask the good Lord today, we ask him to bless all of those who work in the pro-life movement, for all of those who, who are rejected and spat at and told that they're Neanderthal 
outdated, old-fashioned thoughts are repressive. For those who continue the fight despite lack of funding, despite lack of family support, despite lack of political correctness, they push on to save lives. Lord, we ask you to bless their work and bless each one of us that we may always stand for life, even when it's not popular. Amen.